And now we will create our menu widget with one window button. So let's create first time the widget. Uh, interface widget blueprint user widget. We call it user widget menu. We'll open it. We add one canvas panel and one button. Take the button and the position somehow in the middle. And we add also one text on the button. We write window. So that's our button. Compile and on clicked, I'll delete them first time. When the button is clicked, then we will trace the position on the button and we will translate it from screen to world coordinate. And after that, we will attach our window blueprint. So let's do that. We'll call first time, get my position viewport, and we'll translate it to word coordinate. Position on viewport. And then we will spawn our window icon. As will be window icon. Now it's very important where we will spawn it. We take our player controller, controller, the project screen to world will translate our coordinates from our screen and after that we'll promote variable and we call it BP window tool. Next, we will create one more variable. Window button click it. And we will set it. Always we will set it on the opposite. If it's true, we will set it on false. And if it's false, we will set it on true. We will using the not operator. And this way we will know when the button is active or not. And if the button is not active, we will destroy our actor. So we will destroy this actor. If take the button, branch, and we will destroy it. by false. One more time, when we click on the widget button, we will translate our screen coordinate to work coordinate from the mouse to the 3D world and there we will spawn our blueprint window icon. After that we will save it in the Beppe window tool and we will set always on true or false this variable, window button click it. We want to know when the button is active and when the button is not active. And if the button is not active, we will destroy again our window to actor. In the next step, we need the event tick. And in the event tick, we will create one line trace. And with this line trace, we will follow the movement of the mouse. We will translate from mouse location to word space. So let's do that. We create one event tick. We need one line trace by chain O and here we need our player controller we need the function convert mouse location to word space the word location will be the start position and the end position will be the word location
plus word direction multiply will be we want one float from ten thousand oops ten thousand so with the end position so we take the word direction multiply ten thousand plus the word location will be our end point start point will be just the word location now we will split our hit we have here out hit location we will need it to set the location of our icon we take the Bepe windows tool we get it here we'll convert it to the valid get it's important because if it's not valid we will receive errors and and after that we will set the word location word location from root exactly like that and the word location will be our hit location we compile it and actually that was everything what we will do for the event tick and now we have to program what's happened when we click with the mouse so let's call left mouse button left mouse button event and first we want to know that we click it on the window button that the window button is active so branch when it's pressed if the windows button is active then we go on and the next step is actually completely the same like this step from the eventic so we can copy it and paste it down if it's true we'll make a line trace we want to know if we hit our dynamic wall so the hit actor we can cast it to our wall dynamic If that's true, then we can set the position parameter and we can create a hole in the wall. We take first time the set hole position. The hole position will be the hit location. And after that, we we will call the function at the hole. Uh, yes. So, like that. And at the end, we have to spawn our window. So, Actor from class we can make it like that on the same position Stuck. and the Bepe window we convert and save and one more time on the left mouse button when we click it first we take sure that we click it the widget button then we make one line trace we, when we hit active we prove is that our wall is that BP wall dynamic if it is then we set the whole position that will be 
the hit position from the line trace and we add a hole on this position. After that, on the same position, from the out hit location, we spawn a window. So that was from the menu widget. Compile, save one more time, close. And now we have to call this widget from our level blueprint. We open the level blueprint. We need event begin play. When the game starts, then we create the widget. Event begin play. Create a widget. Create, create widget. That will be our menu widget. We need also uh, our player controller. After that, we have to add it to the viewport. And now we have the widget on our viewport. We have to make one last thing, and that is to show the mouse cursor. Oops. Set show mouse cursor. Oops. Make it on true. So theoretically now everything has to work if I make it correctly. Let's see now if it's working. We close the level blueprint and start it. So widget is here and wall is here. When we click on the widget we have the icon and it's not on the wall. I think there is the problem with the collision. Let's stop it. See the wall, collision, yeah, I forgot the collision, so we make the collision, we make it complex, and enable complex collision, we have to turn on, close it, let's start again, window, check, okay, we have a hole, we have also the window, the hole have a wrong dimension, so let's make that two. So have to be here. Uh -huh. Let me ninety. This one have to be I think hundred thirty or hundred forty. Let's try hundred thirty. Start again. Window. Boom. Yep. The pivot point from the booklet is still wrong. So, yeah, pivot points are not in the middle. We make that very fast and with uh, change to modeling. Edit pivot center button. Accept. Okay, like that. Let's try it again. Yep, we have a window and we have a hole in the same place. So that was the problem with the pivot, pivot point. So let's stop. Let's save them. Okay. One last thing so what we can do is to move the window a little bit back. It's also very fast done.
yep. Now it's okay. We we'll have one wall, and we can dynamically create a window on it. Um, I think this workflow is very powerful. You can use it for many different things, not just Windows. So I'll see if I can make another tutorials what's developing this workflow and create more and better way. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um, I wish you a nice day.